Hello everyone and welcome back to the Ear to the Ground YouTube channel. I wanted to make a short video today to talk about a question that we get. Uh, if you watch the last one, then, then you'll know where this is going. I wanted to talk a little bit about the rock music that we choose to cover on Ear to the Ground. Uh, so, you know, there are tons of different subgenres within rock. And we generally have the category indie rock and alternative rock. We used to have classic rock, although I do believe we, we turned that off as a submission. If we get a good classic rock, it, it, it might still stand out for us. But I just wanted to talk a little bit about the characteristics of rock that we tend to support. Um, a term that I like to use pretty often is straight rock. Now that is referencing rock that kind of has like a straightforward beat and uh, isn't too progressive, isn't too experimental, isn't too wild, really. And I know that's almost counterintuitive because rock and roll is by its very nature supposed to be edgy and pushing boundaries. I get it. I do. I definitely get it. But for us, we're looking for a, a rock style that is going to be palatable to a lot of our viewers, listeners, readers. And we want a kind of rock that, the way I look at it is, if somebody puts this on at the barbecue, right, and they've got it on their playlist at the barbecue, are people going to say, wow, that, that's good. I like that. Who is this? Right? That's what we want. We want the who is this so that whoever's playing the playlist can say, I don't know. Let's go check the playlist. I'm just playing this playlist from ear to the ground. They're, they're good curators and they find good stuff. And that kind of, it's got a good beat. It's got good guitars. It's got a good riff, you know, memorable riff, a good hook in it. And then a lyrical concept that is accessible for people. Uh, I, I don't want a rock opera that goes on for 10 minutes of, with a thinly veiled argument about, you know, with your girlfriend. First of all, that's not accessible. It's It probably isn't going to have a good beat. There are, of course, some fantastic rock operas in history, but I don't know that they fit with the kind of thing that we're curating here. One of the problems that we tend to have is that people will start off their song with some sort of sample, or it's like a telephone answering machine for the first 30 seconds. That's not a good hook. That's not bringing people into the song. It's very click awayable. That's not a word, but it's people are enticed to click away when that's what the song sounds like. But if you go boom, boom, you know, you really like you got our guitar riff, you've got drums, something that people say, whoa, what are we listening to here? What's this? Something that really grabs people and pulls them in, that's good. Uh, in, in my background, I, I've had an interest in like pop punk over the years. So those good, rich harmonies, you know, power chord and good harmonies, that's like halfway to my attention, three quarters of the way to me saying yes. Uh, and that doesn't mean that all of our indie rock has to be that way. Uh, in terms of alternative it could be something along the lines of Oasis. It could be something along the lines of uh, any number of bands from that kind of early to mid '90s era. As long as it feels fresh and new, we're ready. We're willing to give it a listen. A couple bands from more recent years that we've covered. Uh, obviously, if you want to know, you know, our most recent coverage, read the site. Go check out our playlists on Spotify which you can get to through the site if you can't find us on there. Um, a band that I've been really digging on here the last year or so is Morning Bird. They have these great swells of harmony, uh, but they don't, you know, we're not talking like the Bee Gees kind of harmonies here. You know, we're not talking like throwback disco harmonies. We're talking genuine rock and roll, but with harmony in it. Uh, Morning Bird's really great at that. Another band that I like a lot, more for more so for the lyrical side, is Dawes. Uh, Dawes was one of the first bands that I really latched onto as a as a blogger because 
their song, A Little Bit of Everything, was just one of these things that just stu stood out to me as a cultural moment. It wasn't just a song to me. This was defining for my generation, I felt like. And hardly anybody in my generation, I found, knew about it. And I just felt this this responsibility to share that song and that message. So Dawes, their more recent albums have gone in maybe not the same exact direction, but I still think that a band like that with these classic rock moments and really good guitar licks and, you know, there's not a formulaic Dawes song. Dawes has many different styles, some really clever lyrical turns, and clearly very bright songwriters. So, stuff along those lines. The last one that I'll mention is, it's going to throw it way back, old school, but Credence, Clearwater Revival, has to be the gold standard for me in terms of rock music, uh, distinctive vocal, really clever lyrics that stick. They stick in your head. You hear that, you know, you hear Down on the Corner, and or you hear Proud Mary, or you hear Fortunate Son. Like These are just songs that stick, even if they weren't played on the radio all the time. You want to hear them again. They're clever. I mean, the lyrical concept behind Fortunate Son was a cultural moment, period, full stop. And I don't expect modern bands to be able to do that on every track that they produce or anything crazy like that. But I'm saying that's the ideal. That's what we're striving for. That's what we hope to find. And if we say no to a song, it's not because it's not good. It's because it doesn't check the kind of boxes for the what we're hoping to find. And sometimes I support artists with a song that I am... Oh, you know, it's good, but it's not great yet. But I just support that song because I can tell they're on their way to being able to make something great. Or I, I dream that they have that potential, and I hope that they have that potential. So when I say, you know, to answer this this question, what are we looking for? You know, the musically, it's it's a, a number of different things. I can't say, well, it should be this time signature, and it should have this many of the... I mean, sometimes horns are good, sometimes horns are distracting. Sometimes vocal harmonies are great. Sometimes you've got a killer lead vocal and you should just shut up and let the lead vocal do their thing. Uh, it's really hard to say, and that's the role of the producer. All I'm doing is reacting to what I hear. And if it's memorable, it, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's progressive or that it's wild or that it's got some crazy aspect to it. A good example of what I'm trying to get at is the George Harrison song, Something in so, Something, I think. Something in the way she moves, right? Uh, that song has, it's not sonically complicated, but it has an emotion in it that captures the listener. And pretty much anybody who's ever been in love can hear that song and connect with it. But it has sonically these just beautiful moments, relatable moments. It just sort of makes you give, you know, have that. <sighs> now, is that a rock song? It depends who you ask. Uh, but I think it is an example of what I'm trying to get at with a, a, a memorable tune that sticks with the listener and is going to be relatable beyond you know some long drawn out story that essentially is inside your own head if that if that makes sense so uh, those are some examples of what we're looking for and hopefully we can find some some really good music in, in the years ahead but we found some really good stuff in the past and i would invite you to check out our coverage if you haven't already here to the ground music.co and click on the little indie rock button and you'll find a lot to like. Thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.